Today we're going to be talking about section 4.7, which is on congruence transformations. So, a transformation is some sort of operation that takes a pre-image, which you originally start with, and transforms it, moves it, into a new image. Notice that the position, size, and shape are all going to stay the same. It doesn't change the size of it, it just changes its location. So a congruence transformation is called an isometry. An isometry is essentially just a big math word, and it just means one of your three transformations. Now the three types of transformations that we have are a reflection. That's where something flips over a line of reflection. So kind of like your mirror, you look in your mirror, it's not the exact same, kind of flips over that, uh, that mirror being the line of reflection. There's a translation, which is the same as called a slide, takes the whole image and just slides its location. And finally, the last one is called a rotation, where there's some fixed point and you rotate around it. Now you can either rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't matter, but it's still a rotation. And while you rotate, your triangle remains the same, or your figure remains the same. So let's look at these three right here and try and figure out what they are. So letter A. Okay, if I'm looking at letter A, the first thing is it a reflection? Is there some line here that flips and makes it the exact same? The answer is no, so it's not a reflection. Then I say, is it a translation? Well, is its shape basically just moved in one direction? The answer is no, so it's not a translation. So then the last thing we have is a rotation. And if you see, it's like this point right here rotates up to this point right here. This point, the same to this point. And you'll see that they're all kind of move the same amount right there. Okay? So this is actually a rotation. Rotates around some fixed point. Next one. Letter B. Okay, letter B. Well, if my y-axis is my line of reflection, it's like my whole image just flips over that line of reflection. So since that's the case, it ends up being that this one right here is a reflection. Last one, you can probably know which one it's going to be. But anyway, you'll see that my image, my pre-image, my blue, moves all up at some angle, thus making this a slide or a Transition. All right, so identifying some real world transformations. Now, if you see this right here, okay, it's called the skip it, and it was new kind of when I was a kid. Essentially, what it is is it goes around your ankle and it rotates around it. So, if we said that I had this little skip it piece right here and it goes all the way around to right here. Okay, you'll see that it's rotating around the fixed point, or your ankle. So this is a rotation. A couple other examples. Okay, the old sliding door from a minivan. That would be a translation. And your footprints in the sand. If I drew a line right down the middle, it flips over them. So this is going to be a reflection. Pretty simple to see them in real life. And you can probably think of your own examples as well. All right. So the whole reason we get into this is for this problem right here. It said triangle X, Z, Y with vertices 2, negative 8, Z as 6, negative 7, and Y, 4, negative 2 is a transformation of ABC. when its vertices of ABC are 2, 8, 6, 7, and 4, 2. Graph the original image and its the original figure and its image, and identify the transformation and verify that it is a congruence transformation. Okay, so if you read this last sentence, identify its transformation. So we graph both of them, see what happened to it, and then to verify it's a congruence transformation, we need to make sure that all three sides of my triangle in ABC are the same distances 
in x z y. So let's graph a b c first. I'm going to do that in purple. Okay. Right? So two a two two a right there. So that's a. Then six seven. And then C is at 4, 2. Right? And so now, that's my pre image. And so now my image is X, Z, Y. So that would be it. So if we look at these ones right here, let's figure out its transformation. So first, does it flip over some line? So let's say we had the x-axis. Does it flip over here? It would be right here. And the answer to that is no, it's not. Okay. What if our y, or excuse me, our x-axis was a line of reflection? Well, then it would be like down here, and it's not. So it's not a reflection. Is it a slide? Well, that would mean that it, if I slid it down, it'd be kind of down here. Or if I slid it this way, it'd be kind of down here, which it's not. If I slid straight down, it'd be like right there, which it's not. Okay, so it's none of those. So it's not a translation. Okay, so then the only thing it's going to be is it's going to be a rotation. And in fact, if you take the origin right here in the middle, okay, it's flipping around the origin. Right there, it's a flip, okay? So, to verify that it's a congruence transformation, I need to find all three sides in my purple triangle, find their lengths, and find the lengths in x, z, y, and see if they're all the same as well. Okay? So, I'm looking for the length of AB, AC, and AC. Now to do this, we need to remind ourselves of the distance formula. If we've forgotten, the distance formula again is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay? So, I'm looking at AB, square root of x2 6 minus x1, 2 squared plus 7 minus 8 squared. So just to speed us up a little bit, 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, 7 minus 8 is negative 1 squared is 1, so this is the square root of 17. Okay, so AB is the square root of 17. Now we go to BC. So 4 minus 6 squared plus 2 minus 7 squared. Okay? Speed this up just a little bit. 4 minus 6 is negative 2 squared is 4. 2 minus 7 is negative 5 squared is 25. So 4 plus 25 is square root of 29. Again, if you want to figure this out on your own, you can pause the video at any time. And finally, AC. 4 minus 2 squared plus 2 minus 8 squared. Okay, so 4 minus 2 is 2 squared is 4. 2 minus 8, negative 6 squared is 36. So 4 and 36 would be square root of 40. So now I know my three sides of my triangle. Okay, so if I look over here, AB right here, this is the square root of 17. Okay, BC, this is the square root of 29, and AC is the square root of 40. Now, these are all decimals, but 
I think it's easier just to leave them in square roots. That way I don't have to deal with a bunch of decimal thing. All right, so now we want to figure out the length of x, z, z, y, and x, y. Okay? So, x, z. So that would be 2 minus 6 squared plus negative 7 minus negative 8 squared. Okay? Speed it up. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Squared is 16. Negative 7 minus a negative 8 would be a positive 1. Squared is 1. So 16 plus 1 is 17. So check it out. Seven, square root of 17, square root of 17. Good. So this length right here is the same as this length right here. That's good. Okay, let's find yz. yz would be 4 minus 6 squared plus negative 2 minus a negative 7 squared. Okay, speeding it up just a little bit. 4 minus 6 is negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 minus a negative 7 would be 5 squared is 20. Five. So 4 plus 25 would be squared of 29. So perfect. That means that this side right here is the square root of 29, which is the same as this side right here. Those two sides are the same. So that's good. So two sides are the same as two sides. Finally, the last one, xy. So that would be 4 minus 2 squared plus negative 2 minus a negative 8 squared. Okay, so 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 minus negative 8 would be a positive 6, 6 squared is 36. So 36 and 4 is 40. So that means that square root of 40 is the same as the square root of 40. So are all three sides the same as all three sides of my triangle? They are, so that means that this is for sure for sure a congruence transformation. You can give yourself a big old check mark because you got it.